Has this ever happened to you? You're so excited about transforming yourself this year that you write down 10 or more resolutions, but when March rolls around, you've already abandoned most of them. This used to be me every year. I would write a huge list of goals and then honestly not even end up looking at that list after writing it. But I figured out how to actually level up. Last year was amazing. I achieved way more than I expected, like surpassing 100,000 subscribers. That's because I focused on my habits as goals. Changes that seem small and unimportant at first will compound and turn into remarkable results if you're willing to stick with them. Today, I'll share with you the ultimate guide to transforming yourself for real this year. Hey team, it's Amy. I was valedictorian and a graduate from Caltech with a 4.0 in chemical engineering. You? and me together are gonna focus on three areas of high impact habits. One new productivity or study habit, one new skill, and one new exercise. The important thing is that we don't wanna go overboard. It might be exciting to think about improving in 20 areas of your life, but if you try to do that, you'll end up improving in zero. For each of the three areas of improvement, I'll be listing habit ideas where you're gonna pick one for each of the three, and then I'll share the one that I'm gonna be doing with you guys on this challenge. At the end, we'll go over a worksheet that I made to track our habits and see how to become each other's accountability partners. Let's go. One new productivity slash study habit. Turn your phone off or go into airplane mode one hour before brushing your teeth. The power in this is how specific it is. That doesn't mean one hour before falling asleep because you could still be in your bed scrolling. Also notice how I didn't say stop using your phone one hour before bed. We need a concrete actionable step to actually make it possible. Review past homework and notes periodically. For example, you can set aside about 20 minutes per day. Trust me, you can do 20 minutes. And review those items for one to two of your most difficult classes this semester. Strengthen those neurons and become that star student this year. Switch the order of your actions. If you usually give yourself time on your phone to prepare before doing work, then switch the order and make it so you work first and then make your phone the reward. This one's so underrated, but sleep eight hours a day. This is a great option if you want more flexibility and customization because you will have to figure out how to do it in your life. And finally, any of the tips from my efficiency or time management videos. The one new productivity habit that I'm doing will be to do something that's purely for myself first thing in the morning. I've been so bad about jumping right into emails when I wake up or wanting to check the comment sections. So I'm going to change that habit about myself because it's not good for me. And taking care of myself first thing in the morning is ultimately going to make me more productive throughout the rest of the day. I'll stretch or eat breakfast before opening up any of my devices. One new skill. Learn to cook or bake one thing that you love eating. This is such a fun one because imagine all the delicious food out there because food is life, you know. So what is one thing you can never get tired of eating? Can you learn how to make that? People might suggest to learn cooking or baking in general, but I think the best is to just focus on one signature delicious dish. Honestly, just for yourself to enjoy. Learn a language. Yeah, me too. I took AP Spanish in high school, but man, I have been wanting to brush up on it because last time we went to Puerto Rico, I was pretty useless. That's why I've been taking an online language class and it's been really fun. A bunch of you guys asked how to improve in a language, so I thought I'd share with you my three steps. In general, the best way I found found for me is to have conversations. Soy de Nuevo York. Like right now to improve my Spanish, I'm using Lingoda, which is a language learning platform. I like how all the classes are very conversational. Only when you really use the words in conversation and you speak it and you listen to it, can you remember it more. Before classes, I'll review the lesson material, like preview the slides briefly. Then the fun and most helpful part, in my opinion, is number two, the live classes. I think it's really fun when you're tested and have to speak Spanish. Spanish or whatever language on the spot. No, remember. <laughs> That's also why learning a new language is one of my favorite ways to glow up. When you get something right, you feel so accomplished and just want to keep improving. I forgot so much Spanish, but this class was actually so fun. I was like smiling in the middle when I got something right and it's all coming back to me. Three is to self-study. That's when I'll be reviewing vocabulary with flashcards that are also provided within Lingoda. Especially for languages and really any skill, consistency is key. So the best way to improve is to learn daily. 
even if just a little bit. Ways to make learning more fun is to gamify or make it a challenge. So Lingoda actually has a 60 day sprint challenge. I'm already really enjoying how thoughtful the Lingoda platform is and how nice the instructors are. And this sprint challenge is actually insane because if you complete the challenge, you get 50% of your cash back. That's a great incentive. I just love how it thinks about the students to motivate them and make learning more fun. The next sprint challenge starts on January 15th. So join the Lingoda language sprint and hit the ground running in 2024. You can use the link in my description to save up to 30% off and use code WAMI for an additional 20 euros off. Dun, dun, dun. I've said this before, but coding. Just learning the basics will be helpful in any industry or job you decide to have in the future. Plus, it'll make you have better problem solving skills and better in math, science, other areas. Learn how to do makeup. Or if makeup's not your thing, you can learn how to style one thing about you, like your hair. I loved watching Jen M's makeup tutorials. Just one thing really boosts your confidence. And again, this trickles down into other parts of your life because of the mood boosting effects. Seemingly random, but pencil flipping. Oh, oh that's not a pencil. Ooh, look at that. Wow. You're a wizard, Harry. Something even as simple as that gives me so much joy when I did it in class. And there was this one guy who told me at the end of the year, Amy, you're so cool. I will always remember how you just effortlessly flip your pencil. And I was like, dang, okay, what do you know? Learn something nifty and quirky and you'll feel cooler and look cooler in class. The one skill that I'm learning is playing the ukulele. I'm still pretty bad at it and I can't play that many songs. So I'm gonna be practicing that. Playing music and practicing reinforces the same parts of your brain that are turned on when you do math. Also, it's simply fun because I love singing. So that's a tip for this section, especially to pick something that's very genuinely enjoyable for you. Keep in mind that this skill habit for this challenge doesn't mean you have to master it by the end. We are what we consistently do. So if you stick with practicing a little bit every day, you can consider that a new skill, even if you aren't 100% good at it yet. One new exercise. In high school, I was obsessed with getting abs cause I just really liked the look on those models. And I felt that if it was something that I wanted, then I can literally get them myself if I put in the work. As an athlete, I see the impact of consistent training on your body. So I thought it was a really fun challenge to pursue this visible indicator of how fit my body could be. At night before going to bed, I would do 30 leg raises and 30 scissor kicks. So that's combination one. Another option is to plank for 1.5 minutes total each day. This means you can split it up into however many sections you want. So you can do three 30 second sessions each day or break that down even more. Oh, this is gonna sound so weird, but I had an electric toothbrush, right? So it finishes worrying mm -hmm. when you get to the end of two minutes. Each time I brush my teeth for that two minutes before school and before going to bed, I would be holding a squat. Man, that burned, but it made a big impact. That's an easy way to not even have to take extra time out of your day to do an exercise, but to simply couple that with something you're already doing and you can multitask with. If you have more equipment, I recommend any exercise on an exercise ball, like hip thrusts or, what is that called again? What? I literally do this movement all the time. Dumbbell presses. This is actually a trick that a personal trainer told me a few years back because no matter what exercise you're doing to work that part of your body, you're also working on your core and stability at the same time on that exercise ball. The thing I'm doing is two posture exercises. One thing that's been my weakness that I've not corrected since like five years of setting this as my resolution is my posture. I'll never forget what someone told me in college. They said something like the most attractive part of a person is their posture. That a woman with good posture draws them in regardless of any other thing appearance wise. I mean, it gives an air of confidence and like you just own the place and that is beautiful. Not only that, but my back just needs some work and not be breaking down because I'm getting older. <laughs>
these are the two posture exercises I'm planning to do. Okay, good job. So for productivity, study, skill, and exercise, have you decided which habit you're gonna focus on for the three sections? No worries if you haven't yet, let's review the worksheet. You'll fill in the top according to yourself, like an inspiring quote or an affirmation to yourself. This worksheet is divided into three sections and we have the days of the week for three weeks of our challenge. In the column total times, you'll write down the number of times you want to do this habit per week. Like for section one, my habit might be turn off phone and I'll do this six times a week. As you go through your week on each day that you do it, you'll put a little X to check off that you did it and track your progress because visible progress is really important. And if you want more structure, you can highlight or circle the days of the week that you plan to do this habit and simply line up your X's on those days you marked. At the end of each week, as long as you hit the total number of times, then you can put a check mark under the done column. We will each be focusing on one habit for these three categories, so three habits total, for a total of three weeks. For the accountability partner, it's all of us in this beautiful A-team community. Just show your progress in the comments however you'd like and reply to your comments with updates at the end of each week for the three weeks. We will be viewing each other's progress and cheering each other on, woo! -hoo. I'm trying this for the first time, so I don't know how this will work, but I think it'll be kind of fun. At least if no one does it, I will be down there writing each time I successfully do my habit for a week. And at the end of the three week challenge in real time, I'll show Share about my experience and how my life has been improved by making it through and you guys will also share with me your achievements and how you feel and overall just make it a great strong start to the new year even if you're watching this video in march december or any other time you can really apply this at any time the other reason i love setting few goals in the beginning is because i believe that for any new goal you have, the best time to start is now. So if you have a new thing you want to pursue in June, then use this habit tracking or a challenge process. With that same concept, you can constantly be leveling up throughout the year, no matter when it is. You have already experienced every single year being better than your last because you have definitely grown since the last year. If you look back and you cringe that means you've grown. So cringing is good. Always remember that. I cringe at my first few videos all the time and I'm still leaving them up because I'm proud of that growth. Now go out and get your best year ever. It's guaranteed to be your best also because you're part of the A team. A team on three. One, two, three, A team. So cheesy, ha ha ha. Cringe, right? That means I'm gonna grow. Love y'all. Love you guys so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs>